Okay, welcome back to Mastermind Time. I'm here with producer and creator Corey Muhammad. And Corey, I'd like to say, well, ask first, where are you from and where did you grow up? Uh, I was born here in Fresno, California, and I grew up in Sacramento. You know what I mean, but I always would come back here. And uh, I've been back here now uh, for about three years. And it's the longest I've lived in Fresno as an adult. Really? Yeah. Three years. Yeah. All right. So how was it growing up? Uh, it was cool, you know. Um, my dad kept me in school for the most part, and um, but I had like a um, what some might call a troubled past because oh. I started gang banging at nine years old in really? Sacramento. Yeah. Nine years old. <laughs> yeah, I was wow. nine. Wow. Yeah, in a predominantly blood city in uh, Sacramento, uh, we had a little street gang called Kit Carson Crips, and we were like about five, six deep. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we had our little turf, and that's how I pretty much started, you know. Okay. I still stayed in school and, you know, came home and did my chores. And really? Kind of hid it from my family, but. Yeah. Really? You you were able to hide that? Yeah, until I started getting in trouble. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so how have the life events you've experienced influenced your creative style? Well, um. Growing up, you know, being, having, because I had, my dad had started smoking crack when I was nine. That's oh. why I went to the streets. But wow. he would always make me do my homework, stay in school, and I always took school serious, even though I ran the streets. So when I was growing up, it wasn't, I wasn't proud to be a, a so-called thug. You know, that wasn't something I was proud of. Right. But it was just something I had fell into. And so as I got older, I still kept that sense in me that we have to be able to uh, have a positive uh, lifestyle in our urban communities. Mm -hmm. Because at 14, 15, 16, I started becoming involved in the Black Liberation Movement. Oh. And at 16 and 17, I joined the Nation of Islam. And I became a lieutenant in the Nation of Islam and even attended the Million Man March as a lieutenant. Wow. So I know that even though we live in our urban communities, in the ghettos, that they say, right. uh, we tend to have uh, negative lifestyles. We don't eat right. We don't think right. right. We don't exercise. So I've lived in the urban communities, in the ghettos, in the projects. And <coughs> even when I was game banging and stuff, I would still study. I would still meditate. I would still pray. So... To me, I feel like just because you live in a so-called ghetto, you don't have to have a ghetto mentality. Right. You know, uh, being uh, courageous and all this stuff is one thing, but just being stupid mm. and sagging your pants. Like when sagging came out, it never made sense to me. Right. You know, it's like, you What's know, you sagging your pants. <laughs> like how are you going to keep your gun in your waistline? You got to oh. run from the police. You got to fight. You know what I mean? How are you going to do all that and your pants hanging all off your ass? So. To me, that kind of stuff just never made sense. And I always thought and seen that it was an a image mm -hmm. that um, the higher ups portrayed right. to program people because television is programming. Mm -hmm. You know, this programming is brought to you by, this program is brought to you by. When people pay attention to media, they are programmed by media. That's how words come out and stuff like that. Right. So now what they've done is they took the television and they put it into computers, and you had the computer, and then you had the television. And now they put everything in the phones. Mm -hmm. So now yeah. they're programming us through our phones. Right. Right. So now yeah. when people, when Jordan comes out with a shoe, for it, say for instance, right. Jordan's coming out with a shoe, it's all on TV. Everybody got to get it. You know, uh, whatever game is on, sports game, everybody got to get it, and they're not paying attention to social issues. Right. So yeah. it's distracting. Yeah, it's a distraction. But mm -hmm. it all could be can be used to reach people, to influence people, to encourage people. And that's what I want Mastermind Time to do is to be able to show that we do have healthy lifestyles in our urban communities mm. and the black communities and the Latino communities. We do uh, practice uh, holistic uh, uh, um, Healing. Practices. Oh, practices. Like we eat right, we think right, uh, we meditate, do yoga. We're not just in the ghettos. Right drinking 40 lip bottles. And so is this what you uh, tend to achieve through your mastermind time? Yeah, the influence of a healthy lifestyle, not just for the urban communities, mm -hmm. for the world in general. 
Okay. And it starts somewhere. This is my little humble beginning. Hey, it's a yeah. great beginning. Yeah. So do you ever feel that you have to censor your creativity with the show in fear of offending anyone? Oh, uh, hell no. No? Well, see, when I <coughs> joined the Nation of Islam mm -hmm. in 1994 and the 95, I became a registered official Muslim. Uh, both sides of my family were against it. Yeah. I even, I was like 16, 17, I had to move and get my own place. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I had to move and get my own place because my grandmother was like, I'm going to disown you if you join the nation. Really? Why and were they like that? Well, I think they were trying to scare me, oh. you know, to not. Because uh, you got to remember that our people, especially like my grandmother and my mm -hmm. father, they grew up watching Megar Evers get assassinated. They wa grew up watching Martin Luther King get assassinated, Malcolm X get assassinated. So Donald B. Elijah Muhammad, he uh, faked his death and left. Oh. But uh, Louis Farrakhan rose back in the power, and everybody was thinking, okay, they're going to assassinate uh, the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan also because that was the trend. So it was more of a fear issue. Okay, so you not know. so much religious. Yeah, not so much of, you know, this religious thing. It was more of fear, and, you know, that people okay. are going to be like, oh, yeah, he's a Muslim now. Mm -hmm. They're going to attack he's a him. Yeah. Well, even before, because mm -hmm. this was back in 1994, before oh, wow. the World Trade, before um, Bush and Halliburton imploded the towers. Mm -hmm. This was uh, before Arabs had this reputation of being so called terrorists. Right. But it was still a fear. Them. It was still a fear of uh, what white, what what the country has been known to do with black liberation, such as the Panthers. You know, they went and raided, and, and they they basically dismantled the Panthers. Right. They did the the, the assassinations through his through the history of America has always been that a black person that rises to try to. Uh, have his people rise are mm -hmm. often assassinated and dismantled. And that, I think that's what my family was more concerned about than the religion. So I didn't care about that. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up gang banging at nine, and then so it's like in a predominantly blood uh, neighborhood. Then my hood out here in Fresno, we're a minority hood. So I've mm -hmm. never been fearful of losing my life or being outnumbered or anything oh, like that. Yeah. So I took that same mentality with the Nation of Islam and the I Black Liberation a Movement. Huey Newton's yeah. Revolutionary yeah. Suicide. Yeah, so, yeah. and then like, Donald B. Elijah Muhammad teaches us to do for ourselves. So <coughs> I'm not, I don't have to worry about uh, my supervisors, hey, I seen you on Facebook saying this, that, and the third. Even mm -hmm. if I did, I mean, okay, oh well. You know, so a lot of us are fearful to stand for the truth and to uh, be a spokesperson of the truth because people who are in power are condemned by the truth. Mm. So a lot of people are censored. A lot of people can't like something. They want to like it. Right. They want to say it, mm -hmm. but they are fearful. A so backlash. They, yeah, mm. a backlash, so they stay in the prison of their minds. And those people are not technically free. Right. They're just slaves in a different form. The, the slavery has evolved more psychological than more spiritual. Mental, yeah. Okay. So who or what has been your biggest inspiration in keeping your project and creativity going? Well, that man, Master Farad Muhammad, the mm -hmm. one in the back right there. Oh, okay. He's the one who uh, came to North America by himself as a thief in the night. Oh. Uh, he measured the earth. He gave us actual facts. You know, he gave us light travels at 1,000. 186,000 miles per hour. The planet travels at 1,037 and one third miles per hour. Wow. And science has, uh, these are not theories, science has proven these as facts. So he came and gave us facts of the earth. And then he gave us facts of ourselves that we are descendants of the tribe of Shabazz, the great tribe that straight away from civilization and live a jungle life. Mm. He taught us how this world, this present world was made and why it was made and uh, how it's going to even end. So, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, um, because everything, uh, Rome had an end, uh, so-called ancient Egypt had an end. Oh, I see. Uh, Mystery Babylon the Great, so-called America, will either evolve or have its end. And it will not come at the hands of Arab terrorists or Islamic terrorists. It's going to be at the direct hands of God, the Son of Man. So. 
he's the person that keeps me influenced because of the truth that he brought. Like he came and taught the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who had a fourth grade education. He was one of the most powerful black men in America. Mm. You know, he came out telling people that the white man is the devil, the black man is God, and they couldn't kill him. Mm. But anybody else, Martin Luther King, he wanted to hold their hands and get along with them right. and lick their feet, and they still killed them. Mm -hmm. So that shows you that there was power behind that man to where he so-called naturally died, died of natural causes. And then his wisdom brought up Minister Farrakhan, mm. and he was able to do what he did, like bring a million, over a million black men to Washington, D.C. Right. In a time where they thought we were going to be rioting or there was going to be race wars there at the uh, monument, and there was a peaceful rally. And you were actually there? Yeah, I was there. Wow. I went there as a lieutenant. I led a squad of about eight men from Fresno. Wow. Yeah. I was one of the youngest lieutenants then, too. I was only like 17. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for sharing your story with us. You're and welcome. That's it for Mastermind Time. We'll see you again. Thank you. Hey. Yeah.